Hi, I'm Chris Bailey from C. Bailey Film, and today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be looking at five radial menus in Blender that you don't want to miss. Now, if you're brand new to Blender, why don't you check out the free Blender Basics course at cgcookie.com. Links are in the description below. Go check it out. Okay, so if you want to speed up your workflow this year, you need to be using these five radial menus to really speed things up. So let me show you how to get access to all of them and what they do. So we're gonna go Edit, Preferences. You wanna to go to Key Map, and right down here, Tab for Pi Menu. This is really awesome. If you click an object, now this is the candle scene from uh, the most recent candle tutorial. Now by turning on Tab for Pi Menu, when I select an object and hit Tab, instead of going into Edit Mode, I get a really cool radio menu that gives me all the different object modes that I can go into. Sculpt mode, edit mode, texture paint, vertex paint. This one really speeds you up, especially if you're working with an armature and you're doing some character animation because you can easily swap over to pose mode and then get over to something else like edit mode or vertex paint really quickly. The next one that I want to recommend is comma on your keyboard. If you hit comma, it brings up a radial menu that lets you select your transform orientation. Now this is really awesome because you can switch between global and local. So if you're trying to move objects around and you've got them in global and let's say, you know, I'm grabbing this guy here on the Y and the X, but then I rotate him a bit weird and I want to rotate, I'm going to actually move him on his local orientation. It's super easy just to hit comma, switch over to local, and now I can grab him on the Y and the Z. You can see he's going to be moving in that orientation. The next one is the full stop key or the period key on your keyboard. If you hit that, now this radio menu changes the pivot point of your object. So if you've got multiple objects selected and we've got a medium point set, if I hit R, you can see it's going to rotate uh, at the median between these two selected objects. However, if I switch to individual origins, now when I rotate, they're gonna rotate on their own pivot point. All right, so the next hot key that I really love is tilde. That's right, the little swiggly line up in the top left of your keyboard, usually under the escape key. If you hit that, you're gonna get this menu. Now this radial menu gives you a different view uh, directions. So you can look at things from the top, the, the right, the left, you know, all that. But you can also jump into your active camera or if you have something selected, you can jump over and view selected. So if I uh, select, let's see, this candle over here and just swing over like that, it's a little quicker than reaching all the way over and hitting the delete key or the full stop key over on your number keypad. And if you're on a laptop, it's not really possible because you usually don't have a number keypad. So this one is really nice. You can just quickly zoom around your scene, zoom back into your camera, zoom back to your objects. I love it. Now the final one is Shift S. This one is gold. I use it all the time. This is the cursor radial menu and you can move your 3D cursor around your scene. Now if you're new to Blender, you might be going, why should I care? 3D cursor, what is that? 3D cursor is amazing. 3D cursor determines where objects are spawned into your scene. So if I want to you know, put a sphere right here where this candle is, I can select the candle and then Shift S cursor to selected. That'll put my cursor where the selected object is. And now whatever I add using shift A, say add a cube, it's going to end up right there where that uh, 3D cursor is. But even more so, it's really useful positioning things. So let's say I've got a ground plane here in my scene. And let's take our little candle here that's like, you know, way off in space. Let's say I want to set it properly on the ground. Well, I would want to first go into edit mode and find a vertex that's on the bottom of my object. So I could switch over here to vertex selection, select that little vertex right there, and then shift S, there it is again, cursor to select it, that'll put the cursor right there at the base of this object. Now if I go back to object mode, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, I can now put the origin right there at that bottom point on my, my candle. Now I can easily come over to object properties and zero out these rotations to make it point straight up. But now I want to snap it right here on the ground. Well, if I go over and select my, uh, my plane, I can shift S and again, cursor to select it. That'll put my cursor right here at the origin of my plane, which is right on its surface. And now I can grab this and shift S selection to cursor right here at the top. So you can see now it's placed it right there. Now I can easily hit G to grab and shift Z to turn off Z movement and just move it around. You can see it stays right there on the plane. So this one's really useful and there's a lot of other, um, you know, powerful cursor options here. We can put it on the grid, world origin uh, cursor to active. Um, so all of these are really, 
really, really good. You can also skip the cursor entirely and just put your selection to the active object. So if I was to, you know, grab this and then, or so just grab this one and then grab this and then shift S selection to active, you can see it's gonna snap this one to the active object. So it's just a great way to move things around very quickly and get them where you want them to be. I hope you find all these tips really useful as you navigate Blender. Use these radial menus, it'll speed up your workflow so much this year. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to leave us a comment, tell us what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future and go check out cgcookie.com. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.